At the beginning of September, my girlfriend Ashley and I had the opportunity to attend a wedding just outside of Glacier National Park in Montana. We decided to turn it into a bit of a trip and spend a few days in the national park. And I had never been to Glacier National Park and actually had never been to any national park. So she was setting the bar pretty high with this one being her first. We flew in on a Monday and after checking into the Airbnb, grabbed some local beer and burgers before heading over to Whitefish Lake for sunset since we were staying in downtown Whitefish, which by the way is a total vibe if you've never been. Tuesday morning, we woke up at the crack of dawn to get into the park and just see as much as we could. Now, we had a long list of things that we wanted to do and see during the week, but we hadn't really decided what to tackle on our first day. So we just started on the famous going to the sun road. Every two to three minutes, we were pulling over, taking pictures, taking videos, and picking our jaws up off the floor because it was just so damn beautiful. You really can't describe how huge and vast this park is or how massive the mountains in Montana really are. Start with a little video action. We reached the Logan Pass Visitor Center around 8 a.m., hoping to pop in and find parking and just check it out, but that was wishful thinking at best, and the lot was full. So we kept moving, still pulling over frequently to soak in the views.
We stopped to see what was left of Jackson Glacier, which honestly wasn't much. Uh, and this was on the way to one of the hikes that we had on our list. And this hike would take us to a bunch of waterfalls, Bering Falls, St. Mary Falls, and Virginia Falls via the Pegan Pass Trail. Pegan Pass, Pegan Pass, I don't know. The hike was a little over six miles round trip and the views did not disappoint. We arrived at Bering Falls, the first waterfalls, still early in the morning. The vibe was just right there. How is it? Say hi. But we didn't stay long since it was only about a mile into this six mile hike. After that, we got an amazing view of St. Mary Lake. We also saw a guy with about 10 horses, but that was pretty much the extent of our wildlife encounters. At the next waterfall, I was ready to jump into the water, but didn't want to hike around with wet underwear for the remaining three plus miles that we had ahead of us.
And finally, we made it to Virginia Falls, the last waterfall. And while a few people actually got in the water, it was so cold. And not just the water, but that whole area was in the shade behind a mountain. And so it felt frigid up there. Say hi. On the way back down, we found a serene little spot for lunch and rested before finishing off the rest of the hike. Once we were back at the car, we continued heading east on the Going to the Sun Road, aiming for the Wild Goose Island lookout. But before we made it to the official lookout, we pulled over because the views of St. Mary Lake were just unreal. The water was so still and the reflections were just breathtaking. We eventually got to the actual lookout for our last stop of the day, and by this point, we were exhausted, ready to turn around. We drove about two hours back to our Airbnb, grabbed some dinner that we just made there, and made it just in time for sunset with a bottle of wine at Whitefish Lake. And we were glad that we made the most of that clear weather for sunset because we woke up the next day to a smokier, foggier Glacier National Park. Since we were still pretty tired from the previous day and another 5 a.m. wake up call, today's goal was a more manageable hike to the Hidden Lake Overlook, about three miles round trip. This time, we didn't stop for any pictures and just hustled to the Logan Pass Visitor Center, hoping to get a parking spot. We pulled in at about 7.30 a.m., and guess what? The lot was already full. But we were able to find a 30-minute parking spot because we desperately needed to use the bathroom at this point, but there was no chance of finding any long-term parking. There was even a 20 or 30 minute line for the bathroom and the people in the line were saying that the lot had been full since 6.30 a.m. which I guess made me feel a little better. We also overheard people mentioning that some were parking in the 30 minute spots like we were, grabbing their hiking gear and heading out, clearly with no intention of returning in time. After going back and forth and realizing that we'd already been parked for over 30 minutes without a ranger in sight, we just said, Screw it, let's go, let's do it. We made it about halfway up, but the smoke wasn't really ideal for Ashley's asthma, and I was also stressed about the possibility of a $100, $300, I don't know, $900 parking ticket, so we decided to turn back. Luckily, we found a parking spot further down the road at Oberlin Lookout, where we had some amazing views all to ourselves, as well as a great view of the Highline Trail.
So day two ended up being much shorter and much more relaxed, but we did stop at what I think is called West Tunnel and took some of my favorite pictures from the trip here. Now, the next few days, the weather took a turn for the worse, with a ton of rain, which we honestly welcomed at that point. The traveling, early mornings, long hikes, and evening adult beverages were definitely starting to catch up to us, and we had a lot of wedding festivities ahead of us the next couple days, so we decided to take it easy. But on Saturday... I ventured into the park alone since Ashley was a bridesmaid at the wedding and I did the avalanche hike by myself. Now, if you've ever been to a national park, you know how crazy parking can get. And Glacier National Park on a Saturday was no different. But I lucked out and was able to find a spot right at the trailhead after waiting for just about 10 minutes or so. Now, as I started on the trail, it began to lightly rain and my camera isn't weather sealed. And of course I left my rain jacket back at the cabin. Panic set in a little bit and I considered turning back, but I decided to take off the jacket that I did have, drape it over my camera like a cape to keep it dry, and I'm glad I did. The rain wasn't that bad and I continued on to Avalanche Lake where I had these amazing views. After Avalanche Lake, I stopped at Lake McDonald for a few pictures before rewarding myself with a bison burger and a beer at Eddie's Cafe. And that kind of wrapped up our trip, or at least the national park side of it. And I could have easily spent an entire month or more exploring Glacier National Park, but I'm excited to go back someday. So let me know in the comments what you thought of this video. I always take a ton of pictures and videos from our trips, but I never really have a formal place to share them other than like Instagram. So I was super excited to put this together and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. But other than that, 
Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, especially if you made it this far.